Well, all right, there we've done it. It's me, John Park, and we're here live in my workshop. This is John Park's workshop for Adafruit Industries, and I want to say thanks for everyone for stopping by. Uh, hey, uh, we had a big unboxing last night. I don't know if you were able to make it out to the Adabox 10 unboxing, um, but it's out. The secret is out. It's the trellis. Who guessed? Trellis M4. This guy right here, that is the star of Adabox 10. Uh, and let's see, for today, I've got a fun little project I'm gonna build. There's not gonna be a learn guide associated with this one because there's already a great guide out for the build by Andy Clymer. And this is the mini keyboard, his CircuitPython Trinket M0 based mini keyboard. Uh, so that I'm gonna do a, a nice little build I've pre-built some of it, some of it we'll be doing together. Um, and before we jump into that, we've got a couple things I wanna take care of. First of all, did you know that we have a job board? Jobs.adafruit.com. If you are looking for work, if you are looking to hire someone, and if you wanna get at a great audience of people who are in a uh, fantastic group of enthusiastic makers, and you don't wanna pay any money for it, well, this is a free job board. Can you believe it? Go to jobs.adafruit.com to check it out. Check out some of the listings there. It's good stuff. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, this is, oh, here's a little sneak peek of what we're going to be building today. I don't have those key caps, and, and I'm going to be building a, a kind of little case around it, but this is the mini keyboard. Uh, and you know what? Since this is based on the Trinket M0, and you may want to buy a Trinket M0 to build this project at some point, why don't we get a coupon code? How about this one? Mini keyboard. Mini keyboard. M-I-N-I-K-B-D is your coupon code. That's going to get you 10% off in the store on anything you like except for software subscriptions and gift certificates. Uh, so go fill it up. Fill up a cart full of Trinket M0s. Do it. You know you want to. Also, these are in stock. Uh, at least as of this morning, the Trellis M0s, both the full-on kit as well as, I think, the just the bare boards on their own. If you want to get that and the elastomer button pads and build your own case, uh, you can do that too. So fill your cart up with good stuff. That's how we keep the lights on here at Adafruit. Buy good stuff. And uh, you can get 10% off with this keyboard, mini keyboard, M-I-N-I-K-B-D coupon code. So that brings us to the product of the week. And... Uh, before I show you the product of the week, what, uh, what do you guess? Any guesses? Guesses in the, uh, in the chat? You know what, I'm gonna open up my YouTube chat. I'm in Discord chat right now, but I need to open up a YouTube chat to see if there are any guesses as to what today's product of the week could possibly be. Some strong hints here so far. Uh, and I'm just gonna pop open my Where's the chat? Hey, chat, where'd you go? I don't see the chat. Let me make a bigger window. Sometimes these uh, dynamic websites are funny that way, where they don't show you the chat. There it is. It's off on the side until you stretch out the window. Pop out chat. I like that one. Uh, Trinket M0 said stuff with Kirby. That is correct. Thank you for your excellent guess. That's right. I made this the product of the week. It's Trinket M0. As our uh, friend of Adafruit, Todd Kurt, Mr. Todd Bot over in the Discord chat said, yay, Trinket M0 project, great little board. Yes, this is a fantastic board. I also know C. Grover's been doing some cool stuff with it. Uh, Mr. Certainly has remarked that I have had my coffee this morning, which is true, but man, you gotta keep the energy up, right? Because this is exciting stuff. Uh, and the Trinket M0, this board's bananas. It's $10, $9.95, I think. And you're going to get 10% off if you use that coupon code. Remember this one? Mini, coupon, mini keyboard. That's your coupon code. 10% off on a Trinket M0. Trinket M0 will run the Circuit Python. It will run the Arduino. And as I'm going to show in a moment here, it will run the make code. Did you know that? Did you know you could run make code on the Trinket M0? So, yeah. Hey, there's Andy Clymer. He is in the Discord chat. Go to check out the Adafruit Discord chat if you haven't. Andy is in the house. Thank you for stopping by, Andy. Andy is the creator of 
the project I'm going to build today, both the PCB, uh, the concept, the design, as well as the code. So uh, he says he loves the Trinket M0. I don't know, does, does anyone not love the Trinket M0? It's hard to think of anyone who could not love the Trinket M0. Uh, it's an AtZamD21 Cortex-M0. It's got uh, just a little bit of uh, flash memory on there. It's got a few pins. Uh, it's not too big. It's not too small, but it's pretty darn small. Uh, it's even got a, uh, an a real analog pin, a real DAC on there. So, great board, the Trinket M0. And uh, why, why do I keep talking about it and not holding one? Let me show you. Look at that beauty. It's teensy. It's teeny tiny. I love it. It's a great little, great little board. Um, so, the question from Yannick in the board is, can make code be used with, used with a Neo Trellis? No, that has not been ported over. Say hi to the dog barking over there. Um, my shop is under attack. The, uh, the Neo Trellis does not have support in make code. Maybe that'll come. Uh, it would be cool. Uh, certainly the make code support of Circuit Playground Express makes you think that uh, Microsoft could maybe... Um, support the uh, Neo Trellis or Trellis M4 because it's got lights, it's got touch inputs, and so on. So it could be a really cool interface. And if you've ever looked at make code for Microbit, you'll also see uh, that the ability to light up animations in the GUI is a really cool thing. So, so doing that on the Neo Trellis uh, M4 would be very cool. So uh, you know what it's time for? It is time for this. That's right, it's the Make Code Minute. Hey look, it's me, and I'm hidden behind the Make Code. Let me grab that window. Uh, this is running in the Google Chrome browser, in case you're new to Make Code. So for today's Make Code Minute, I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, usually I use the Circuit Playground Express with Make Code, but if you head to maker.makecode.com, you can run the make code on a whole bunch of different boards. So launch that and then pick the Trinket M0, which is what I have done today. So you'll notice here, uh, what I'm gonna do is a similar project to our main project of the day, which is keyboard entry. So what I've done is in uh, maker.makecode.com, under extensions, I've added the keyboard extension. And uh, this allows me to have keyboard, uh, USB HID keyboard presses and function keys and some other things, media keys. Uh, and I'm using the input block here on touch D1 click is what it defaults to. But what you can see is I've set this to on button D0 down, it's gonna type in A and it's gonna hold it just like pressing a keyboard key. And then on button D0 up, it's going to release that key. Now I'm also, uh, you'll notice there's a little cool breadboard view over here. I'm also going to load up my uh, let's see, where did, it, where did it go? I've got my overhead cam. Uh, here you are, there it is. No, oh, it's off on that side. And uh, I'm gonna try to move that. Bear with me one second. All right. And let's shoot that over there. Okay, so you can see there is my actual keyboard. And then the one other thing I'm gonna load up is a console view. So. There you can see this console view. I'm actually gonna switch back and forth between those. So watch that view as I press the keys on my keyboard. Let's see, where are you? There he is. So as I press one of these buttons, I'm getting key presses in this terminal view. If I press and hold, a whole bunch of A's. If I press and hold the other, I get a whole bunch of B's. Uh, so that is how you can use the Trinket M0 inside of Make Code in order to create a little keyboard. Uh, and you can see it does this nice little diagram for you as you build it to show you one possible way that you could build your board. I am definitely hidden under the Make Code. Hey, there I am. All right, so that is your Make Code Minute. Yeah, there we are. I'm gonna move this thing back out of, out of the way. I'm, I'm, uh, boy, I'm feeling bold here, moving stuff around in this layout because sometimes that uh, causes Wirecast to uh, flip out on me. Um, all right, we can, 
we can hide that stuff now. And goodbye, terminal window. So uh, as you can imagine, you can set up the um, Trinket M0 with the make code to run about, I don't know, four buttons maybe. I think we might have four or five pins that'll work. Um, but looking at our project of the week, let me bring back this Firefox view. Um, what Andy has created here is a scanning matrix using diodes that allows him to read six buttons, or in other configurations, you can read rotary encoders or a mix of them. Um, let me see if I can find a, oh, there's some nice examples with the rotary encoders or a mix of them. Let me go find the picture of the board. He's got this in, in GitHub. So there's the, there's the hardware. I actually bought mine off of Tindy. You can go on Tindy and buy them, although I know that the store is closing for the holidays. Um, but if you, if you go through, uh, maybe Andy in the Discord cat, chat can say when the good dates are to, to get your own board. Um, and uh, also a URL to go check those out on Tindy. I know if you go andy.ac slash minikibid, M-I-N-I-K-B-D, you will get the uh, sort of main link. And there in the chat, thank you, someone. Oh, the, the Tindy store is open through the weekend. Okay, so you still have time. And I believe these are selling for $10 or maybe even on sale for $9 right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to um, the workbench here and we're gonna have a look at, in fact, let me go to my overhead view over there and I'll just put a main cam over here. How about, and then let's have a look at this project. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in pretty tight here. So what you can see is this is the PCB. And by the way, it's in this beautiful matte black finish. It's gorgeously designed board. Uh, and what it has is a set of headers for your trinket. So we're going to do a little virtual build of one. Where'd my trinket go? Oh, I left it over here. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so there's a little space on there for your trinket just like that, and solder that on with some headers. And then you can use uh, different types of mechanical keys. I've got some Cherry MX Red on here, which are quiet, and I'm thinking of using this as my keyboard switcher, so I didn't want it to be clicky, although I usually prefer clicky for typing. And, excuse me, these uh, will accommodate, let me straighten the pins out, different uh, layouts of the footprint of a whole bunch of different manufacturers of keys, uh, of uh, switches, key switches, which is really impressive. Um, and uh, Andy has some suggested ones for low profile, if you're looking for a low profile look. Uh, so you can put the six um, key switches on there. You can also do the rotary encoders in these two slots or a mix of them, like I said. Um, so what I've done is I went ahead and populated this with six of the switches and the trinket as well as six switching diodes and uh, went ahead and soldered those up. And so that, dun, 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 let me get that out of the oven. That looks like that. So there we have, um, it, you know, there's nothing difficult about it. The only thing is you just want to try to, depending on how uh, precise you want it to look in the end, you have to be pretty um, precise in holding down your keys as you solder them. And as Andy suggested in his um, documents, you'll want to solder one pin and then kind of check your alignment. You can even twist it a little bit while you solder the second pin or uh, loosen that uh, by touching the iron to the solder so that you get nice even rows. Um, and then I'm just gonna pop open my chat here uh, in case anyone has thoughts or comments, particularly Andy. So Andy, tell me if I'm lying about anything here because it's your project, man. Uh, where is my Discord? There you are. And uh, there we go. Oh, good. People are going to talk about keyboard switches. Yeah. People love keyboard switches and have, have favorites. I kind of like, I have blue. I have uh, Cherry MX Blue on the, the, my main keyboard that I type on. I like those. So I know I just started a holy war. Sorry. All right. So now the next step, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. The next step with this, I can put away the soldering iron, is uh, the enclosure. And so you can use it bare as is, but you're gonna wanna um, put some little rubber feet on the bottom, or you can 
uh, have a little enclosure made for you at Pinoco or download the files and cut them on a laser cutter. Uh, so I cut some different materials this morning on a laser cutter to see what would look nice. So here was my, uh, just a piece of Baltic birch plywood. I often cut in this or cardboard at first just to make sure that things are lining up and, and I like the alignment of them. Um, you can even sort of stain it. It doesn't take stain that well, but you could make it look nicer. I'm not gonna go with that though. I decided to go with some acrylic and the acrylic I have uh, is this really cool stuff that actually was suggested to me by C. Grover in our Discord chat. It is a matte finish on one side, laser cutter, cuttable acrylic. So it kind of goes with our matte theme. And it is designed to show LEDs through. So uh, I don't have a bright LED right here right now, but let's, let's uh, I'll just use a little flashlight. This is a little LED flashlight actually. So you'll see it's, it's uh, light permissive, but you can't see behind it, especially you know, if there's no ambient light under there very well. So um, that might allow me to see the status LED, which is kind of cool. And uh, the other modification I made to, uh, the one modification I made to his design was I added a little reset, uh, a hole for the reset button on the trinket. So this is a piece that will go on top of the trinket and we'll have a little space for our USB cable to plug in. And then this is that same material. I left the matte finish on the bottom because that's the part we'll see. Oh good, I just dumped off all the washers. So I was following uh, Andy's instructions and what I've done is I've pushed some M3 nylon screws through. Sorry, you can't see that very well because it's very dark. And I'm setting washers over those. Now I'm gonna drop the board on top like so. Okay, I'm gonna put on some glasses so I can see this as we work. And you know what, I will zoom in the rest of the way. Let's see if it can focus. Oh, too much. There we go. And now what we're gonna do is set uh, some hex standoffs that will give us the little um, space we need to clear. That's the word I'm looking for, the clearance we'll need. Uh, to clear the trinket there. And I'm just gonna finger tighten those on and then I may hold the screws from the other side. But right now I've just got this, the uh, screws masking taped with painter's tape so that they don't fall out the bottom. Now the tricky one here is gonna be, there's one screw that is right here between, you can see it, right here between these two keys. And so what I'm gonna do is use some needle nose pliers to get the nut on there, and then I'm gonna remove the tape and try to screw in the screw from the back while holding this on. So I've got some pliers, I'm setting that on there. I'll try to give it a little bit of a turn and then I should have had a screwdriver on hand, hold on. I don't have, I don't think my socket set has one that'll fit that, let's look. If it does, that would be awesome. Maybe, maybe. All right, that might work, so let's try it. I always have to remember to check that we're not Oh, it will not clear. Okay, so let's try. Getting that up through. All right, we got in. Okay, so now we'll be able to tighten that with a screwdriver. Yeah, we need like a very, very low clearance socket to get in there. And there are a couple different laser cuttable configurations of the case depending on if you're doing um, the rotary encoders versus the keys or the mixture. But I really like this matte finish uh, laser cuttable acrylic, super cool. And 
Now what we can do is, oh, did I need to put those ones on there? I, yeah, for those I do, and here, that's right, so we're not, we're not putting any casing over this side. Um, might be fun to design something that would, but we're not. Okay, so now we have our little cover for the trinket, and I left that little reset hole. Uh, it's a pretty small hole for the reset, so I don't think the standard chopstick is going to work in there. Maybe a bamboo skewer on the other end. Uh, and what am I looking for now? Some screws to go down into the top. I noticed if you look on Andy's site, he found some nice um, stainless machine screws, I think socket head, which would look really nice uh, in there. In fact, how are we doing on time? We got a little bit of time. Let me just look and see if I got any socket head machine screws, because those would look sweet coming up out of the top. And that is not the metric one, so this is. All right, so here's a bin of metric. And none of the short ones are socket, are they? No. Oh well. Oh, here's some cute button head ones. Those are a little long too. Mm, no, we're striking out. All right. The black ones, it is. It's kind of stealth, though. It doesn't need to call attention to itself, does it? Now, one of the uh, fun parts, really fun parts about this, is picking out your keycaps that are going to go on top of the key switches. And I got some from an online retailer in the UK. They were, they were like mechanicalkeyboards.uk or keycaps.uk or something like that. I'll, I'll find that in a second when I'm back at the computer and let you know that they have these beautiful keycaps that are square and round. And I think they're beautiful. So uh, those are those are what we're going to put on there. Before we do that, though, let's let's go have a look at. Okay, I've screwed some of those down a little too tight, haven't I? Or did I miss a washer? Or did I double washer? Or no? Okay, I got to loosen that up because I did not trim some of my leads enough. That's on me. All right, that's a little better. It's straighter. Uh, and now we can put um, these little guys on, little rubber bumpers. Set a set of those on there. Now Andy said that one of his inspirations for doing this was just having a nice number pad, because, or rather arrow keys. He didn't have nice arrow keys on his laptop. And I can fully appreciate wanting a nice little set of arrow keys. I may just build another one with the rotary encoders as well, because that's great for some of the video editing and graphics applications that I use. So. All right, so let's plug this in now and have a look at... I'm going to go back to the down shooter. Where are you, down shooter? Did I have it? There you are. Okay, so I'm going to unplug that, and now if we plug this one in, I have already programmed the trinket. Uh, oh good, you can see some of those nice lights shining through there. Uh, and so what I've set it to is there's the power, uh, yeah, let me darken that like that. There's the power, um, oh this is super red, I'm going to make this one big for a second, hold on. Okay, that's very saturated in color, which is a lie, I'm going to fix that. And let's, that's a little better. Okay. And one second. We got workers here today too. We have all kinds of fun going on at the workshop. Okay, so uh, there you can see I've got my uh, LED, and what I did is I changed it so that it shows kind of amber when it's not doing anything, and then when we press a key, it goes red. Now, uh, the keys, what do I have them doing right now? Let's have a look at the code. So here is the code in Moo. And uh, 
what I've done, I'm going to make this even bigger so it's very legible. Okay, so what I've done in here is uh, this is uh, the default code that Andy had posted, and then I made just a couple changes um, to add this mod key um, here. So when the um, circuit Python HID keyboard code runs on a key press or on a key release, it can run multiple um, keys at the same time, up to six of them that it can press simultaneously. So what I've done here is I've just got the key code shift. So that means when you type in an A, it's actually going to be a capital A. Um, and this is a bit confusing, but what's written here does not mean that it's capital. Uh, it, it, they're all written this way here, but if I didn't include a shift key code on top of that as a modifier, these would all come out as lowercase letters. So right now, when I press a key, uh, and we'll just do it right in here, so I'm going to... Oh, that's the wrong comment. There we go. Uh, so now you can see when I press, that gives me an E, F, if I hold, types a bunch of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is switch out what my keyboard modifier is from being shift to being control. So the reason I'm going to do that, let me go ahead and save this to the board. The reason I'm going to do that is the control um, A, B, C, D, E, F happen to be my keyboard shortcuts that I use for camera switching. So now... You can see, oh, I think one of them got not assigned. No, we'll see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I need to uh, make these make sense to me, but you can see each time I press one of these, we're going to get a different uh, camera. So I'm going to actually set these to be the small and large or the large and small versions of uh, the main cam, the overhead cam, and the down shooter cam. Okay, so now let's go to... Let's go to the overhead there, and <laughs> there we go, the workshop there, and I'm going to unplug this and then put on some nice keycaps. So uh, I don't have two sets of like ABC, ABC or anything like that, so it's actually kind of a puzzle as to what the right things are going to be to put on here. Um, and I can't remember if I got numbers or not in this set, so I, I could do ABC and 1, 2, 3. Um, or I could do W for workbench, or uh, main workshop camera, about like that. And let's see, I don't know if all these are here, so we're going to go somewhat arbitrary. Now, another thing you could do is um, adjust the code so that Maybe you have one key that's just a modifier. Okay, I'm just going to get fun and put some stuff on that looks cool. So you could have maybe four keys that are sort of uh, your, your main keys and then two different modifiers on those, which would expand the number of things you can do a lot. I hope I don't spell something terrible if I... All right, I don't know what any of that means, but there we go. Now we've got, that's not all the way, there we go. Look at that beautiful little device, huh? Tab G arrow W arrow S. I don't know what that means, uh, but let's go back over and, and uh, try it out now. Uh, so I'll just have a little bit of software fine tuning um, to have it working pretty much the same way my old camera switcher was working, but then I might be able to improve it beyond that. So let's go over here and there we go. And I actually don't ever have a camera switcher for going to the um, to this main FaceTime camera. So I use the, the computer to do that because I'm standing at the computer to do that, but maybe I'll add that. Um, so 
Let's see, that is uh, the project in a nutshell. I think it's a real beauty, and I wanna say thanks again to Andy Clymer for uh, creating it and sharing it with the world. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's open source, because he's got the board files here, right? This is open source, yeah. Uh, here's a KiCad project file. Yeah, he's got all his stuff right there, so if you look at, uh, let me bring this back up. You can see here it is on GitHub. Here's the project, and uh, here is the software for it. What he's got is on top of the um, code that you saw, let me open up the other file that's on the board, which is the keyboard matrix. So he's got two Python files, one references the other. You can do that in the circuit Python. Um, and so if we open up my Atom view, uh, you can see this is the mini keyboard buttons.py. That also goes on the board, and that's what's handling the um, scanning of the matrix of the keys. Um, so that we have, so we're able to read six buttons when we only have, what, five inputs on the, on the circuit, uh, or on the trinket M0. So, um, let me know if anyone has other questions, particularly in the Discord chat. You can ask Andy himself. Um, the questions in YouTube. Uh, is it possible to simulate not only keyboard, but joystick or mouse too? Um, yeah, we can do mouse, and I don't think we've written joystick, but I could be wrong. If you look in um, make code, there's gamepad. I don't know if that's the same as joystick, but there's gamepad. Uh, support, there's mouse support, and there's keyboard support. We can do mouse and keyboard for sure, uh, as well as media controls. We kind of break those off as their own thing. Um, so let's see, let's head to the Discord chat. Any questions there? Uh, board is 10% off or more in quantity. Um, Todd Boss says, yeah, this is a great project. Agreed, very cool. Yeah, thank you, Andy, again for sharing it. Uh, by the way, also Andy just uh, put up a guide about a week ago on um, the Adafruit Learn system. Let me pull it up right here. Uh, so he is a new author to Adafruit Learn. And let's see what will show up here. There it is. Getting started with Drawbot. Uh, so this is a Python-based uh, illustration, drawing, procedural. I think there's even animation that people have done with it. And I'm looking forward to uh, playing around with that when I have a little time off over the winter break because it looks like a lot of fun uh, creating images through Python in this uh, very specific uh, library set that's been created for making that easy. So, so thank you, Andy, for writing that guide. Um, and why don't we switch back to a... Oh, not that, not that. Look at... Nope. Yep, there it is. I'll put me back here. There's the little project. So I'm gonna go and uh, tweak that so that it works uh, precisely with my cameras. And I may, uh, it's tempting to make others to use them on different computers for different things. I'm definitely gonna do one of the rotary encoder ones too because hey, that's cool. Um, so one last thing I will remind you if you wanna go and get yourself Trinket M0 in the store or anything else, uh, it is 10% off with this coupon code, which is mini keyboard, whoop, whoop, mini keyboard. Uh, and uh, that is all. So I will uh, see you the next time in John Park's workshop and uh, hope you all have great holidays and an excellent new year. Thank you again for stopping by. Bye-bye.